Uh, my name is Lara, uh, and I would like to start this interview thanking you, Dr. Mandar, for sharing your time and your wisdom with us and with all the viewers. Okay. Thank you, Lara. Um, Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. I would like to start asking you uh, for some things that you talked in the previous video, in the previous interview that you mentioned about three pillars in the elf life. Yes. Can you please talk a bit about it again so the viewers can just be a bit in the, in the theme of our interview? No problem. As you mentioned, we at Amayur have initiated this series of talks and interviews. And mm -hmm. I have already mentioned Ayurvedic concept about three pillars of life. Uh, for new viewer, viewers, uh, I must explain that Ayurveda is not just a medical science. It is much beyond than that. So it considers life as a whole. Okay, so it considers uh, different aspects of life. And it equip, equates life like a tripod which has three legs, right? Mm -hmm. so, Ayurveda says that life is like, like this, which is based on three pillars, uh, which are called as Traya Upastambha in Sanskrit. Traya is three, Upastambha is a pillar. Okay. These three pillars are food, sleep, and sex life. So Ayurveda believes that if all the three pillars, they are well maintained, then the life is well balanced. Okay, so according to Ayurveda, sleep is as a, a very important role in life, right? Yes, yes, for sure. That's why Ayurveda used this symbol of calling it as a pillar. You can quickly imagine uh, two examples. One is a table which has four legs, right? And one is a tripod which has only three legs. So even if it's a literary simile used to explain, but it explains a lot because if there are four legs and one leg is damaged, uh, it can still continue in a collapsing way, but continue. But if it's a tripod and one leg is broken, uh, it's, there's no quest question of continuing as a tripod, right? So this simile is very, right. it says okay. that all the three things are important. Sex life, sleep, and food. Okay, so you would say that they take, like, they have the same importance? Yes, you can say that. You can say that, okay. So, does Ayurveda lay down any rules about sleep? Yes, of course. Actually, there are many rules about sleep. Uh, can you please... Uh, talk a bit about it or enlist them, please. Uh, yes, the first one uh, I would like to say is Ayurveda considers sleep as an urge. Uh, this concept needs to be explained for the viewers. Urge is something, some bodily demand, <coughs> which is to be fulfilled urgently. Okay. Right? So there should be no compromise. When we feel that, it must be completed. It may be hunger, which is, a, which is an urge. It may be thirst. It may be sneezing reflex. Similarly, sleep is an urge, according to Ayurveda. So the first rule is, whenever we feel like sleeping, we must sleep. We must respect that urge. Okay, so this is the first mm -hmm. rule. Okay. Second rule is, we should never sleep in the daytime. So day sleep is uh, contraindicated in Ayurveda. With very few exceptions, which we will discuss later, but day sleep is contraindicated. This is the second okay. rule. Then the third so, rule. Sorry, yes, sorry yes. to interrupt. Please. So our famous nap time, it's not correct, right? <laughs> Uh, not really correct. Like the Portuguese nap time. <laughs> okay. no, no. It's good that you raised this uh, 
maybe in future discussions i will reiterate this that resting is different but if we sleep after uh, in the daytime or after food it is highly contraindicated by ayurveda okay so the next rule is uh, there should be some time gap between our last food and our sleep this is also the reason why day sleep is not allowed because if we sleep after lunch it's it's going to create problems but even for the sleep in night ayurveda expects us to have an early dinner then there should be a time gap and then one should sleep this is the next rule okay you would say that we, we should have like a, a gap of how many time how yes, much exactly uh, because uh, as you are aware ayurveda is not about numbers so it it's mm -hmm. mainly a philosophical science based on logic so number is not really important but if at all viewers want to know uh, ideal gap between uh, last food and uh, sleep in the night uh, will be around 3 hours gap okay right but this is for convenience that i am putting it in numbers yes sure what what ayurveda expects is when we eat our dinner it has to cross through three phases of digestion so the first phase of digestion should be over completed before we go to the sleep okay okay and uh so what happens if we break those rules it's a very good question why because doctors like us make good business <laughs> okay. that means that means if one breaks these rules uh, certainly one leads to have some diseases in future okay so jokes apart but on a serious mode okay. if the sleep related rules are not followed uh, certainly in future the person invites one or the other disease it depends on which rule is violated for example okay. uh, can i continue uh, explain please please for please example, for example the rule of sleeping in time or when we feel sleepy we must sleep as an urge if it is violated and if it becomes a pattern that means many times many days months and years the person feels sleepy but try not to sleep due to work due to any other entertainment etc if it becomes a pattern then not sleeping even after getting sleep as an urge in long run creates what ayurved calls as vata type of problems i'm sure you have heard about vata dosha right yes yeah but for yes. the newcomers for the newcomers who are not familiar with uh, uh, with ayurvedic terminology uh, yes let me tell that not sleeping in spite of feeling sleepy increases dryness and it keeps on increasing and if it is not rectified in time in long run one can have diseases okay, okay. the other extreme that means second rule which which says that one should not sleep after lunch or after food immediately after food so if mm -hmm. one sleeps immediately after food heaviness is the key word excess heaviness increases in the body and if it is not balanced in time then in long run diseases like obesity or diabetes will occur okay okay that's what i was going to ask you if you give some examples of disorders that can happen like this like we can see in maybe well what i what comes to my mind it's like when you are pregnant or when you have a kid mm. and that can happen for a long period because mm. usually uh, not for my experience but um, we can hear that the pregnant the mothers and fathers have this lack of sleep during a lot of time and we can hear that people get 
really or anxious or have uh, some kind of problems it's related that, it's good that you raised this uh, problem because this is quite an obvious problem i would say but because ayurveda is a life science it just doesn't restrict its thinking about diseases right so it it mm -hmm. thinks about life uh, in holistic way so those people who are unable to sleep due to genuine reasons like for example security personnel uh, doctors working in the night duty yes. hospital or as you said people uh, couples having uh, newborn babies etc so if well and ev everyone that works sorry everyone that works exactly. in night shifts exactly exactly so the name is not important due to some reason yeah uh, if one is unable to sleep in the night time ayurveda has laid down some compensatory rules you can say ayurveda allows such people to sleep even during the day okay but there are some sub rules that means even if they are allowed to sleep in the day that should not be after lunch that should be before food mm -hmm. and it should not be 100% com uh, compensation for example if you are working uh, in the night shift and you miss your sleep generally sleep is 8 hours so you should not sleep 8 hours in the day to compensate it 100% so half of what you missed is allowed to be uh, recovered in the data so this is a second sub rule so day sleep is allowed for those who miss it in the night due to genuine reason but half of the period is to be compensated uh, allowed compensation okay 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 that's so people are allowed to sleep during the day if they can't sleep during yes. night yes okay okay there is some good uh, news right yes that's that's good news so <laughs> if it would be impossible for those people to compensate and to manage because there are a lot of people working in those conditions so it's important that it's like our viewers we don't know so I, I really appreciate that this issue is being discussed because I know, as you are saying, there will be hundreds and thousands of people globally who work in, in during night times and who, who want to help themselves for their betterment. So Ayurveda is for all because it's a life science. So those who, who work in night shifts, they are officially allowed to sleep. But if they do only one change after a, this discussion between us that instead of going home having a heavy breakfast or, a, or having a heavy lunch and then sleeping considering that it is their right to sleep now if they make if they make simpler changes that means they can go home get fresh sleep when their stomach is still empty and after compensating the sleep then they can continue they can have food, etc. That will help them to be having better health. Um, we were, we are talking about the lack of sleep, mm -hmm. but if you have like the opposite, if you sleep for a long, long time, mm -hmm. you can also have some disorders related with it, right? Of course, uh, it's it's good that you raised because Ayurveda. Uh, considers balances of prime importance and obviously Ayurveda thinks both the extremes as you are saying. So one extreme is not sleeping in the night time. The other extreme is those people who sleep a lot. So Ayurveda thinks about them. This is not allowed first of all but it may be due to some bodily changes. The most obvious change is increase in what Ayurveda calls as Kapha Dosha. So it, it may be due to some temporary physiological change in the body. But if it continues, if a person feels that I am sleeping too much, uh, he or she may have some Ayurvedic expertise, some advice, because this is a disease or a disease causing 
factor and it needs to be treated okay 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 that's that's important because also it's important to find the balance between and also that uh, maybe like you were saying about the vata and the kapha right so maybe not everyone has to the same amount of uh, hours or have as the same effects like sleeping less or too much as mm. the same effects in everyone exactly so uh, as i as i already said ayurved is not about numbers but uh, it reminds me there is an excellent word used in ayurveda to discuss what you are asking right now how much should be the proportion of sleep and working period the sanskrit word is samajagarana swapna i'll explain but it's a one word explanation one word answer to all such queries uh, i repeat for ayurveda number is not important so if anybody asks me doctor how many hours can i sleep i will not answer or i should not answer that but yeah. the term sama jagarana swapna means there should be a balance between the time for sleep and the time during which you work and this balance will differ in case of every individual but because it is a natural urge so the simple rule is when we feel like sleeping we should sleep and when the body has had enough rest we will awake right uh, but right please, but please never forget that our history the mankind's history is pretty long compared to the invention of devices like a clock a mobile and what not so there were <laughs> there were no possibilities of fixing an alarm for our forefathers right but still yeah, they were right. sleeping and they used to successfully get up in the morning yes <laughs> why because when our body has enough rest we get up or to be precise we wake up whether we get out of our bed yeah, yeah. but we wake up naturally and getting or waking up naturally is a signal that we have had enough sleep probably there are few people that get up without an alarm clock but now nowadays it's it's very common right yes, people I, don't get up <laughs> i completely agree with you but uh, uh, i must share something here for all the listeners uh, have they noticed that except human beings no other species no other living creature moving creature like birds and animals they need alarms right mm. so yeah. i think this is self explanatory that nature has everything programmed if we have enough sleep we will awake for sure okay. there is that's there important is, if i am allowed to add there is Please. one more there is one more reason why people today they need alarm because the basic problem is very few people go to bed in time today right i right. ayurved says that the beginning of night is the time for sleep but people work till late night then they they are before television sets or they are having drinks doing parties reading or thinking about the stressors so they sleep late that's why they find it difficult to wake up early in the morning that's why they need to fix a buzzer or an alarm so it's just a vicious cycle which can be certainly changed into a good healthy cycle by knowledge of ayurveda right so if people get more uh, connected with the nature cycles they will learn also the time and they will automatically go to bed a bit early for sure exactly i think at least during this situation we should uh, start re respecting nature again right right <laughs> message is clear especially now yes yeah. so It's if true. we start re respecting nature nature has 
enough wisdom to keep us alive and to keep us healthy. That's true. Okay. I would like to thank you, Dr. Mandar, for your time and for your sharing with us and hope to see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. See you I soon. hope uh, the viewers will continue uh, with this uh, Amayur's attempt of disseminating the wisdom of Ayurveda. And so far we have discussed about many aspects of maintenance of health and uh, during next few episodes we will be trying to cover a few more topics of health interest okay so thank you okay thank you namaste namaste Olá a todos se quiserem mais informações sobre a associação portuguesa de medicina ayurveda poderão contactar-nos através de www.amayur.pt o nosso site tem disponíveis todas as informações sobre os profissionais de medicina ayurveda ao longo do país, assim como das entidades formadoras reconhecidas para lecionar os cursos de terapêutico técnico de medicina ayurveda. Para além disso, se desejarem juntar-se à Associação Portuguesa de Medicina ayurveda, têm três categorias de sócios. A categoria de sócio profissional, que pretende defender os, os profissionais da ayurveda em Portugal, assim como a categoria de formando, que são todos os, os, os associados que estão em formação, e a categoria de amigo, para aqueles que gostam do Ayurveda e que querem que ele cresça em Portugal. Para além disso, também podem adquirir alguns dos produtos disponíveis na associação. Muito obrigada por assistirem ao podcast e continuem a vê-lo.